sixth grade Bobcats, Mr. Flato here. Welcome back to another great week at the Helena Middle School. Uh, we went a week without having a Bob lesson because we did not have Monday last week, but fret not. We are back and we are rocking and rolling on <clears throat> Characteristics of Healthy Friendships Part 3. I hope you guys are picking up some great tips on how to be a great friend because in order to have a friend, you have to be a friend. Relationships are such interesting things. We can never control other people in life. We can only control how we show up as a person, how we show up as a friend. And hopefully these tips are having you guys think about some of the characteristics that you do have and some of the characteristics maybe we need to sharpen up on a little bit. So let's get rocking and rolling with this Bob lesson. I hope you guys go out there and make it a great week. At this week's Bob lesson is going to be named Characteristics of Healthy Friendships Part 3. But first, let's be our best this week at HMS. Let's be safe, let's be responsible, let's be respectful, and let's be a learner. And the first one we're going to talk about today is being kind and being nice. And sometimes I wonder if we take these things for granted because they seem fairly obvious. Being kind and nice to people is something we should always shoot for. Whether this is somebody that is our best friend, this is somebody that's our boyfriend, girlfriend, this is somebody that is um, a family member, or if this is somebody that is a stranger. Uh, we should shoot to be shoot for being kind and nice to all people, not just our friends. People want to surround themselves with people who are kind and nice, and that seems fairly obvious as well. Sometimes it's easy to take these characteristics for granted. This is the basis of being a friend. If you think about what is one of the most basic things of why somebody is a friend, it's probably, I'm hoping, because they are kind and nice and some of those other things we talked about, uh, like being respectful. Uh, I got a cool picture here of the horse being kind and nice to, it looks like a little Yorkie, that looks like my little parents, Yorkie, um, giving him a ride across the river and it says, perfect kindness acts without thinking kindness. And what that really means is um, perfect kindness. You just do it. You don't have to think about it. It comes second habit. And those of you that can do that, I think, are probably um, very good friends. And, and some for some of you that don't do that as easy, maybe we could make that a goal to just be kind and nice to everybody we come across. Characteristic number two is available. Be available. As we get older, newsflash, our lives get busier. We have more interest. We have more responsibilities. We have more things that we have to do. We get involved in more things. We have more obligations. And this can make having time available to spend with friends more and more and more tricky. Being available for a friend in need is also very important. This may require prioritizing your friendships for friends in need. Uh, for instance, I had planned on watching a show this week um, that comes on at 8 o'clock every Wednesday night. And I had a friend text me and said, hey, I'm going through some stuff. Can we talk tonight? And in this situation, I had to DVR that show and save it for later so that I was available to talk to that friend um, that night because my friend needed me and and my friend needed to to talk to me and share some things with me and 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 I needed to be there for my friend so that would be an example of what being available for a friend is. Um, I talk about friendships with kids in my office all the time and and I often ask kids in my office this is one of my favorite questions. Would you rather have four quarters or a hundred pennies? And a lot of times kids look at me and say, well, it, what's the difference, Mr. Flato? Or a lot of times they'll say, well, I'd rather have four quarters. And I say, why would you rather have four quarters? And they'll say, well, because four quarters is easier to carry around than a hundred pennies. And then they'll look at me weird and they'll be like, what are you talking about? And obviously that they are the same amount. And what I really mean is, would you rather have four great friends or 100 average friends. And the reason I ask this is because it is not physically possible to have 100 great friends. You do not have that availability, that much availability as a friend. So think about that. It kind of fit in with this one. I thought I was waiting to save that for the right opportunity. So ask yourself, would you rather have four quarters or 100 pennies? Because if you want to have 100 pennies or 100 friends, you might find it difficult to have the time and the means and the energy to put into all those friendships. Me, myself, I'd rather have four quarters, but that's just me. And you guys all need to make that decision for yourself. The third one, puts in effort. Like most things in life, to keep friendships alive and healthy, you have to put effort into them. 
Uh, if you look here, we got a couple plants. We got a healthy plant on the left. And then you have a plant on the right that looks like it maybe may have came from Mr. Flato's house. I'm not great with plants and keeping them alive. Um, I live a very busy lifestyle myself. Um, but this is a very real thing. To have a great friendship, you have to put effort and time and energy into it. And the more serious that friendship, some of you I know are um, getting to the age where you maybe want to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Um, guess what? The, um, the more serious or the more intimate a relationship becomes, the more effort is required. So if you just have a friend that is so-so, you might not have to put as much energy into that as if you say you have somebody that's a very great friend. Um, when you get older someday, if you decide to, to have a boyfriend, girlfriend, fiance, um, to have a husband, to have a wife, um, folks, at the end of the day, those are just friendships that are a little bit more serious and a little bit more intimate. And those relationships require even more effort to keep alive. And no matter what age you are, whether you're my age or your grandparents' age or, um, or 11 to 14 years old, this rule will be true for the rest of your life. Um, in order to keep friendships alive and healthy, you've got to put effort into them. If you do not put effort into them, maybe those friendships aren't that important to you. Something to think about. Our next one is accepting of differences, and this is a very important one in my opinion. No matter how tight of friends you are with someone, no matter how hard you try to be alike, and I know middle schoolers do this a lot, let's dress the same, let's talk the same, let's dye our hair the same color, um, you're still going to have your differences no matter how hard you try, and that's a good thing. Having differences is a good thing. Uh, we talked earlier about how a huge component of friendship is having shared a common interest. That's a, probably a pretty good reason why you were friends with that person in the first place. Hey, we both like basketball. Hey, we both like gaming at night. Hey, we both are in the same book club. We both do ballet together. I could go on and on, right? And so we need to find that middle ground because at one point I am saying that there's a very good chance that you're good friends. You share a lot of those common interests. But those common interests and our identities can't be so tied up in trying to be like one another that we end up losing sight of who we are. We also need to understand that not everyone is going to be the same. And we need to let our friends be who they are. And I have a great quote of the week I'm going to share with you here in a couple minutes from a student um, that I was working with this week that said this. Um, I got a picture in here too. Now, those are both apples. One on the left is a Granny Smith apple. The right one could be a Macintosh, could be a Fuji. Um, I'm not quite sure about that. But my point is, is that they're both apples. And maybe these apples are very good friends. But these apples can be different. They don't need to be the same. The apple on the left can be a green Granny Smith apple and love being a Granny Smith. And that doesn't mean that it, does, that it thinks any less of the apple on the right for being, let's say, a Macintosh. But they respect one another. The green apple isn't trying to tell the red apple, hey, grow some green skin and be like me. And the red apple isn't saying, hey, you're not as good as me or why don't you try to, to redden up your skin so you can be like me. They are friends and they are letting each other be who they are. Hope you guys like that analogy. And the last one for today, and this is a huge one that I see in my office all the time. Healthy friendships is not or are not possessive. Um, and what I mean by possessive is possessive means you own something, you possess something. Okay, you cannot take your friend and put it in your pocket and take it home with you at night. Okay, it is not an object that you own. Okay, right now in my office, I am wearing a watch. I own that watch. I do what I want with that watch. I have since put on some shoes, and these shoes are mine, okay? These shoes do not have a life of their own. These shoes do not have feelings, okay? Um, my shirt that I'm wearing, this shirt is mine. It's not a friend. I own it. If I want to wear it inside out, I can wear it inside out. If I want to, to draw on it, I can draw on it, okay? Friendships are not like that. We do not own our friends, and conversely, our friends do not own us. It is not your right as a friend to dictate who your friends can and cannot be friends with. 
nor should your friends dictate who else you are friends with. Okay, and I see so much of this in my office. So-and-so are friends with one another, and then one of those friends goes to be friends with somebody else, and then the other person says, well, if you're going to be friends with them, you can't be friends with me. Folks, this is not how friendship works. Um, I read this quote in a book I read this summer. And it said something along the lines of true friendship gives people the space and freedom to come and go, to do whatever it is they want to do. And in that space and freedom, to pick you as their friend. Okay, So you let them come and go. You let them do what they're going to do. And when they come back and they decide, you know what? I've I've hung out with other people and, and I really enjoy spending time with you and having you as my friend. That's what a true friendship is. All right, and we are on to the quote of the week. And this quote of the week comes from a student um, that I'm not going to name just because of the sensitivity of the discussion or the conversation we were having. And this student didn't even realize I was going to use this until they said it, and then I used it afterwards. And I asked them, and I said, hey, can I use that quote? Um, It just came out of their mouth. And this person, we were talking about friendships, and they said, you know, all my true friends let me be myself. And and that's that was so awesome when we talked about that, and um, that happened to just be a characteristic um, that we were talking about earlier, accepting each other's differences and w- not being possessive. So thank you to that student um, for that quote. You didn't even know you were doing it at the time, but that's what I love about my job is these things just come up and they hit me and I'm like, ooh, can I use that quote because it's awesome and I think the rest of our school needs to hear it. That brings us to this week's Jelly Bean Question of the Week winners who are... Jordan Sinis, Hannah Mata, Sam Christian, Mason Rausch, and Madison Gardapi. Come see me after school for some jelly beans. <clears throat> this week's jelly bean question of the week is, what is harder to catch the faster you run? If you think you know, get your answer into the Bob Box by Friday. All right, Bobcats, let's make it a great week at the Helena Middle School.